Amen. You know, I, I had a fourth grade teacher. I think she was, Mrs. Thomas, was she a fourth grade teacher? You don't remember. She, uh, she seen all these leadership qualities in me, you know, just as a kid, you know, growing up. The only problem was I was leading everybody the wrong way. Thank God I got saved. Aren't you glad for salvation? Yes, yeah, so oh my, praise God. There's no telling. Well, I didn't even want to think about it. So anyway, it's just good to be born of the Spirit of God and to have heaven as uh, your home and to be able to look forward to what it is that God has planned for us. Amen. How many of you know God's got great plans for us? Matter of fact, um, you know, as we are worshiping the Lord, and you can take this for whatever it's worth, you know, sometimes... How many of you know God knows exactly what's going on in your life? He sure does. And not only does he know, he's also terrifically interested. So as we were worshiping the Lord this evening, and you know, sometimes you know, um, uh, you know somebody can have a word. It might be for someone specific. Uh, but you know, if you're in the situation and uh, you know, uh, you're going through something and there's a word that comes from heaven, praise God, you can take it by faith too. You know what I'm saying? So um, <clears throat> anyway, as we were worshiping, um, um, I just, I, I felt like I heard the Holy Ghost say, brand new start, brand new start. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, the scriptures tell us, he said, I know the plans I have for you. They are plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope, give you a future. And a lot of times we interpret that in the light of our, maybe our own failings or, you know, something that we didn't quite do right or wherever it is we might find ourselves right now. How many of you know that uh, the will of God for our lives doesn't change just because you screwed up? Huh? Aren't you glad for that? I'm going to talk to you about screwing up tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you all kinds of, you know, yeah. You'll be encouraged by the time I get done talking about me. Hallelujah. <laughs> But the truth of the matter is, is I, I you know, uh, uh, like a new beginning, a turnaround is for someone here tonight. And don't think about what it is that uh, may have happened or transpired within your life uh, up till now. You think about what it is that God wants to do with you today forward. Because that scripture, the plans he has for you to prosper you, not to harm you, give you hope, give you a future. That's yours, if you'll take it. Amen. Praise God. Let's bow our heads, we'll pray, and then I'll get into what I want to share with you tonight. Father, we love you so much. And we thank you, Father, for the encouragement, not only of the scriptures, but also of the Spirit of God. And I thank you, Father, that you watch over your word to perform it in every one of our lives. So, Father, tonight, as we come before you, I just want to thank you, Father God, for helping us to have an ear to hear and hearts to believe. Thank you, Lord, for your divine instruction for utterance in the Holy Ghost, unction by the Spirit of God, to speak into the lives of these, your people, and to share those things, Father, you would have them to know. And so we just thank you for your blessing in the house tonight. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Let's open our Bibles to 1 John chapter 2, the first epistle of John, not John's gospel, but the first epistle of John chapter 2. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. 1 John chapter 2, I want to talk to you this evening a little bit about uh, following uh, the Spirit of God, following the Holy Ghost. I don't think sometimes that we really place a lot of emphasis as much as we should, maybe is a better way of putting it, when it comes to being led by the Spirit of God or following the Spirit of God. And I think sometimes the reason for that is, is that it seems a bit uh, ambiguous or mysterious you know, somewhat of a mystery. It's like, how in the world do you figure all of that out? But you know, when Je and, and it really shouldn't be that difficult. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's not. But Jesus was talking with his own disciples before they were regenerated. In other words, they were unregenerate. They didn't have the spirit of God in them. And he did tell them, he says, I've got a lot of things that I'd like to share with you, but you cannot bear them now. In other words, they were without the Holy Spirit's indwelling presence in them to help them understand. Remember when he opened unto uh, the two guys on the road to Emmaus, he opened unto them the scriptures. They said, did not our hearts burn within us as he shared these things along the way? 
So fortunately, as believers, you know, and as children of God, his presence dwells within us. He said, I'll come and make my home in you. My father and I will come and make our, our home in you. And so he wants us to learn the way of the Spirit. He wants us to listen to the Holy Ghost. And the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, sometimes I think people are, are led by the Spirit of God, and it's almost un, unconsciously. In other words, they're not really aware, you know, consciously aware of the fact that God is actually, you know, uh, directing them in, in a certain direction. And so what we want to do is we want to talk about the characteristics um, you know, that, that give us an understanding along these lines so that, you know, when it comes to our everyday lives, you know, before we go and do something or make a decision or whatever, we can say, Lord, what about that? I believe, praise God, that he'll lead us in everything where our lives are concerned if we would just ask him, wait and listen. Are you listening to me? So we're going to talk about that this evening. We'll give you a bunch of scriptures. And like I said, <laughs> I'm going to use some of my mistakes so you can all learn some. Praise the Lord. What not to do. Everybody say hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Notice with me, if you will, here in 1 John chapter 2, notice something that uh, John in this epistle was writing to them. And he was talking to the brethren in this uh, letter. And I want you to notice, let's start with verse 20. I'm reading from um, um, the English Standard Version because it, it has a certain readability that I think that uh, you would enjoy. In verse 20, um, he says, but you have been anointed, King James says, you have an unction, or you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. Now, the King James says, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Now, <clears throat> you can, you know, I suppose, split hairs over the interpretation of that particular verse, but the reality is, is that there's knowledge that has been placed in you because he dwells in you, okay? So again, as we go on reading here, he says, but you have an anointed or you've been anointed by the Holy One and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you don't know the truth, but because you do know it, because no lies of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Uh, let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will be able in the Son, or I'm, I'm sorry, and you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But now notice 27 particularly. But the anointing or that unction that you have received from him abides where? Where? In you. Say it again. In you. It abides in you. Hallelujah. So he says, what you have received abides in you, and it goes on then to say in this verse that this anointing, I'm sorry, i got to start all over again here, but the, but the anointing that you've received of him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as this anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. Hallelujah. So John is writing to these disciples and he says, you have an unction from the Holy Ghost. You have an anointing from the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, I've got an anointing. You have an anointing. And, and, and again, that's not like, okay, there's something special about it. If you're born of the Spirit of God, you have an anointing that abides in you. Now, he went on to say, you, need, you have no need that anyone teach you. That's not to say that God hasn't put teachers in the church 
you know, to teach the body of Christ or preachers in the church to, you know, so on and so forth. But what he's trying to explain is, is that you have this unction on the inside of you that teaches you. Didn't Jesus say that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will teach you. He will bring to your remembrance those things I've spoken unto you. So again, where is it that this happens? In us, inside of us. We're so body conscious. I mean, you know, everything that we do, you know, revolves around the physical part of our being and so on and so forth. And sometimes, you know, academically, we can be, you know, very active and that type of thing. But when it comes to the Holy Ghost, when it comes to the one who abides in us, sometimes he kind of gets, well, what would you say? Uh, Buried. Or all the other stuff kind of clutters things up. You know, didn't the Bible say to be still? and know that I am God. And sometimes, you know, we get so wrought up, we're so anxious about this and that and the other, and we really, that's never a good time to make a decision. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Praise God, you know, sometimes you need to pull aside and come apart, rest a while, and, and just wait on God and get quiet. Hallelujah. You know, some of the best times that God speaks to me is when I just wake up. There'll be certain things, you know, he'll just, he'll drop or deposit certain things within my heart, you know, within that moment, because he, he knows as if he doesn't, I'll get all wired up about something else and he won't get a chance to talk to me. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So we have this anointing or this unction within us, and it's intended to teach us, to teach you. So, and the reason I don't want to share this with you this evening is, is in talking about following the Holy Ghost, I mean, it's it's probably probably arguable, but at least in my way of thinking, I don't think there's ever been a more important time when people by the, I mean, Christians learn how to be led by the Holy Ghost, because you can make some pretty serious mistakes, and it can be very expensive for you, but thank God we don't have to. Can you say Amen. You know, we can walk in the light as he's in the light. So I just think it's so important in these last days that we learn to listen and obey the Spirit of God. So that may require us to do a little bit of changing, you know, and instead of, you know, I I have a tendency to be pretty impulsive sometimes. Just ask my wife. And, uh, you know, to pull it back and to say, wait a minute, let's just check this out here for a bit, and let's just see what the Spirit of God... You know, there are certain things, you know, that you may want or not want. I mean, you may desire. You know, he said he'd give you the desires of your heart. And and a lot of times, you know, it isn't that he's opposed to you having it, but sometimes the timing's not good. Huh? It could put you in, a, uh, you know, in jeopardy, you know, or this or that and the other, because you're pushing it. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yet right on the other hand, I remember when we first got started in ministry and the Lord spoke to Joan and said, I want you to play the piano. And, um, you know, we didn't have a piano player. And, uh, and so, uh, um, you know, she basically learned in front of the congregation, you know. And um, uh, how many of you realize sometimes, praise God, you know, you don't, you don't have to know. You, he's not here tonight, but you take Steve uh, Roselle. I mean, this guy, you talk about a diamond in the rough. I mean, when he first started singing and things like that, I mean, well, just ask Linda. She'll tell you, a little bit rough. But I tell you what, what a great blessing he has become to edify the church and to exhort the church and minister to the church. Well, he didn't start out that way. So, you know, when it comes to things that you're involved in, particularly, you know, when it comes to the service within the church, you say, well, I'm not qualified. I can't do that or whatever the case might be. Well, don't, don't, don't cut yourself too, so short because the reality is, is you probably in and of yourself, you're not. But with him, praise God, you can do all things. Can you say amen? And some of the greatest blessings in people's lives, you know, really occur when they say, okay, Lord, here am I. Amen. I don't know how this is all going to work out, but let's do it. So anyway, uh, my wife was uh, um, said yes to playing the piano, you know, and, and she was, uh, she had taken all kinds of piano lessons, but she didn't play by ear. Is that the best way to say that? I don't know that much about any of that. So, but, uh, but she was willing to learn. And so away she went and kind of, well, so there was practicing and preparations and things like that that needed to be done. You know, uh, and we had a piano here at the church that I think somebody had bought for the church. Um, and, um, but we didn't have one at home. 
And so I can remember, here we are, you know, 21, 2, 3 years old, maybe, or something like that. And we go uh, there down in uh, Omaha to, I don't know what the name of that place is. But anyway, we're looking at this, this piano. And they got all kinds of pianos. I mean, you can spend a lot of money on pianos. Did you know that? That Yamaha up there, I don't know what it's worth right now, but it's worth a lot of money. You know, so anyway, we go into this place and we're looking at these pianos and we're thinking about, I mean, we don't have two nickels to rub together. You know, so we go in and we find this upright, this Kimball upright, and it's a nice, you know, piano and things like that. And so, you know, once you land on something, then all of a sudden these salesmen, man, they put the full court press on you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's like cars and everything else, you know, why? Because they want to sail. Well, so we're looking at it and we like it and we talk about it and this and that and the other and, and, uh, but uh, I just told him, I says, well, I said, uh, we really do like this piano, but uh, we're just not sure, uh, you know, that this is the one for us and what we should do. So we're just going to go home and we're going to pray about it. And you would have thought that you're going to what? Yeah, we're going to go home. Pray. And so he, he said, well, this is the deal and the deals today and blah, 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 blah. I said, well, you know, if you don't want to do the deal on another day, then I'm sorry, but I, we're going home. We're going to pray about this because we didn't know what to do. It's like, and it wasn't a lot of money. It was like 1500 bucks, you know? And um, so we went home and di just did that and prayed. And the Spirit of God spoke to us. You know, you know the, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost bears witness with our spirits that we're the, the children of God, right? So, so we prayed together. We said, Lord, what do, you, what do you want us to do? And so on and so forth. And I, th I think the way it turned out, this is the way the Lord led us, okay? He said, you give them, I don't remember what it was, 250 bucks, probably all we had or whatever. And he said, you know, put the rest of it and I'll take care of it for you. So that's what we did. We had faith to do just that. So we went in, bought the piano, brought it home. She started playing it. And I'll tell you what, it's the easiest thing we ever paid. I think it's probably the easiest thing that we ever paid off in our lives, I mean, God just, you know, took care of it. Amen. And so thank God, you know, when we talk about your life and mine, we need to pause and say, you know, Lord, is this really, you know, what it is that we need to be? Because he will lead you if you'll ask him. Amen. And sometimes you won't like what he says. Thanks for your enthusiasm. Yeah. Because he'll, you know, just say, uh, no, that's, that's not a good idea. And then you say, well, yeah, but I want it. And then you've got a choice. Hallelujah. <laughs> but if we'll do it his way, and praise God, he can bring it to pass and it'll be easy. Are you listening to me? So I, I just want to talk about this, you know, because, it's, again, especially right now, you know, we're talking about all this inflation and different things that are going on. Listen, I don't care what's going on. If you listen to the Holy Ghost, he'll lead you. Amen. He'll talk to you. You need to do this. Don't do that. You know, he'll, he'll direct your path if you'll just ask him about the things that you need to do. How many of you believe that? You should, because praise God, he'll, he'll tell you exactly what you need. And the thing about it is God has not given you the spirit of fear. So if the way that you view what's taking place in your life is fearful, it's not God. You got, you got to get that shook off and you got to get rid of that so that he can talk to you. Are you listening to me? Because he doesn't, he doesn't lead in that way, in any way, shape, or form. Are you with me? And again, it's important in these days, the Apostle Paul talked about the deception, the confusion uh, that we would witness in the last days. And I tell you what, people, they are out of their minds. I mean, you talk about confused, they don't know straight up from sickum. But you do. I said you do. So don't let what it is that they're, you know, communicating, sharing, saying, or whatever the case might be, you know, have any influence where your life is concerned. Because, see, the Bible says that the Spirit speaks expressly in the latter times that some is going to depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. I'll give you a uh, case in point. CRT, if you don't know what that is, it's uh, critical race theory. It's a doctrine of the devil. It's flat out nothing but inspired from hell to divide, conquer, and destroy people's lives. Now, I don't have time to get into it, but that's the truth. And yet people all over are, are um, you know, taking it hook, line, and sinker 
Are you listening to me? Not as many as you think. Because a lot of times, you know, media and different ones will blow these things up like this is the thing that's supposed to be going on. But it's set on fire of hell. And yet again, just as Paul said, that there'll be people that, you know, devote themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the the uh, insincerity of liars whose conscience are seared. You know, you, you... some people, you listen, you watch them on the television, you go, man, dude, what, you're, you're in left field. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, here's an interesting scripture, though. The Bible tells us to remember your leaders. Be careful about who you're following spiritually. Are you listening to me? Because not everything that barks is a dog, at least not in these days. It says, remember your leaders. Now, I'm talking about what the Bible says, okay? I'm not, I'm not so interested in what anybody else has to say, but I am interested in what the Bible, Bible has to say. It says, remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God, all right? That's why people need to be in a good Bible-believing church, amen? A life-giving church. Not some place where they're just, you know, got all kind of goofed up doctrine and things like that. It goes on to say, consider the outcome of their way of life. Now, this is important. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. You know, I want to follow somebody that made it all the way. I, I don't want to follow somebody that end up shipwrecked in the middle of somewhere, you know, and got all goofed up and backslid and or acting like the devil. Are you listening to me? That's why, you know, so, so when it comes to who it is that you're following, they need to have a track record. Are you listening to me? And, and uh, if there's been trouble there and different things like that, I'm just telling you. You know, I'm just telling you, as your pastor and as a child of God and as one who's been called, you know, into the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to be careful about who you're following. Are you with me? Now, the scripture says, considering the end of their, King James says, conversation or their manner of life. Did they, fill, did they live out the full length of their days? Did they follow Christ until they breathe their last breath? You know, so on and so forth. You know, because if they didn't, that's not the person you want to follow. There are a lot of charismatic folk in the body of Christ. But just because you're charismatic, that don't mean you're following heaven. How many glad you came? Praise the Lord. It's true anyway. It goes on then to say, don't be led away by diverse and strange teachings. Remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. It's good for your heart to be strengthened by grace, not by food, which has not benefited those uh, devoted to them. And of course, this letter is being written to people that, you know, they were in a program of works to get to heaven. How many of you know works don't get you to heaven? And yet there's a lot of folk think, you know, well, I'm a good person. I'm just as good as them and not as bad as they are. So evidently, well, listen, uh, last time I checked, the Bible says your righteousness is like filthy rags. So it really doesn't make any difference, right? But yet you can get over there and you can get in with a company of people, you know, uh, that are all settled in about, you know, how wonderful they are. But the truth of the matter is, praise God, that it's because of his grace that any of us are what we are. Are you with me? And so it's important for us to understand that. And so thank God we don't have to be deceived. We don't have to be confused when it comes to the will of God or the plan that he has for us. Now turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm going to read out of the King James here now. I want to uh, get back to my territory here. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we're talking about following the Holy Ghost. Following the Spirit of God that's on the inside of us when it comes to our our personal lives. Because you and I, you know, can be and should be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Praise God. So now, um, notice with me in 2 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 13. The Apostle Paul again is writing here in this second letter to Timothy. And... um, He says in verse 13, but evil men and seducers or imposters will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I didn't read the article, 
But uh, I see that Billy Graham's uh, organization, Evangelistic Association, how many of you are on their mailing list? Or any of you? A couple of you? Um, they just sent out their magazine called, uh, um, did you happen to see it, Teresa? The Progressive Church? Or something like that. And basically, the caption on the front of it is, is the progressive church can cause you to go to hell. That's exactly what it said. Now, again, I didn't read the context of what it is that they were saying. But, you know, there's all this stuff that's creeping into the churches and, um, you know, being politically correct and things. Listen, if you're going to preach the gospel, there's no chance in heaven or hell that you can be politically correct. There's no chance, you know. And yet, that's what's happening in a lot of the churches. You know, it's people, I mean, you can say a lot of things. You can get a big crowd, but that don't mean what you're being fed is true. Are you with me? So that's a whole other subject that we don't want to get into tonight. But notice here again in verse 13, he said, Evil men and impostors will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing of whom you have learned them. That from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures. Everybody say the Holy Scriptures. Yeah, the Holy Scripture, the Word of God, which is able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, so that the man and woman of God may be complete. King James used the word perfect. But complete, thoroughly furnished or equipped for or unto every good work. So when Paul is talking about this, and he's writing to Timothy, He's talking about, you know, there's going to be imposters, there's going to be seducers, deceivers, and so on and so forth, and, um, and, th and they'll be everywhere. But what does he point Timothy to? He said, but you've learned and you know, and from a child you've known the Scriptures. Huh? He says that all Scripture is given by inspiration. So the point that I want to make to you is, is in talking about following the Holy Ghost, and following, you know, in the path that God wants us to, when it comes to following the Holy Ghost, it begins by following the Word. Amen? Now, you know, you got to kind of find your way through it. When I first got saved, you know, I, I got turned on to the Word of God, but dude, I was dangerous because I had a lot of zeal, but I wasn't too bright. All right, none of you were like that. Okay, that's fine. I'm glad you didn't experience that in your lives. But the only way for one to become acquainted with the Father and also the will of God is through the Word. It is, the Bible is God speaking to us. You've heard me say that many, many times. So when it comes to you and I, you know, navigating, when it comes to you and I determining the right path, the direction that God would have us to go, it's always going to have to be in agreement with the Word. Can you say amen? Because if you don't, then you get into other things. That's why when Paul was writing and talking to Timothy in another place, he said, I want you to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Well, if the Word of God is to be rightly divided, that means it can be wrongly divided, right? Okay? So people could say all kinds of things, you know. I mean, uh, lots of guys get up in pulpits or women or whatever, they make merchandise out of people sometimes, you know, because they're there for only one reason, and that's to extract from the people whatever it is that they're after or whatever they want. It's to be regretted, but it happens. Are you listening to me? So thank God we've got the Holy Ghost. And he can lead us. I went to a meeting one time over in Omaha, Nebraska. If I mentioned his name, you'd know exactly who it is I'm talking about. You know, notoriety, uh, national ministry, and things of that nature. And uh, I, I stepped into the auditorium there, and, and, um, and I was sitting kind of back up somewhere else. And I heard the Holy Ghost uh, uh, speak to me and say, don't listen to what he's got to say today. Or, you know, I thought, hmm, Okay. So what I did is I got my daytimer out and did some planning and some different things like that and never did listen to anything that he had to say. Because people can, you know, like I said, if you're not careful, 
you know, you, you can be led astray. And again, as a pastor, I'm just telling you right now in these last days, you and I, we need to, we need to follow the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? So that we don't end up in a place where we don't want to be, praise God. And another thing that I'll say to you about that is, is that the Spirit and the Word always agree. Because if it doesn't agree with the Bible, it's not the Word of God. Not too long ago, somebody came and told me, you know, that, that the Spirit of God had spoke to them and said that, that they were supposed to live together with this other person. And they weren't married. And I said, time out. You got a chapter and verse for that? No, but you know the Spirit of God. No, that's not God. And I told him, I said, that's not God. Is there any place in the Bible you can find that out? Huh? There's something else that was talking to them about that whole issue. Are you listening to me? Amen. Well, the thing of it is, is that if you don't, if you don't compare, you know, the scriptures to what it is that you're thinking, you can be deceived. Isn't that right? I mean, here, here's a person, you know, I mean, they just thought, well, you know, I, I heard the Holy Ghost and he told me that we're supposed to live together. I said, no, he didn't. <laughs> really? No, not at all. You know? So anyway, we got that all figured out and straightened up and at least anyway. But the Spirit of God will never tell you something that contradicts the Word. Are you with me? And that's important. So, so you do really need to have, you need, especially in the New Testament, have a really well-rounded. I'll give you another thought. You know, I love the Old Testament. I think it's great. Praise God. You know, all those things were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the, worth have come, or ends of the world have come. So there's things we can learn from that. But I can remember, as a, uh, you know, when I first got saved, there, was, there are people that were really Old Testament slanted. You know what I mean by that? I mean, they're reading the Old Testament all the time. Well, you know, the unfortunate thing about it is, is that's the old covenant, not the new one. And it's, you know, the law, which basically, you know, is steeped in judgment. And so everything they seem to look at, you know, all they, it all, it had that tint to it, you know, and, and, um, you know, and the Bible says that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So my point to that is to say, spend most of your time in the New Testament and interpret the old in the light of the new, and then you won't make mistakes. Are you listening to me? If you get that thing mixed up and turned around, well, then, you know, some things can happen there that aren't, uh, aren't the best. Are you listening to me? So again, the Spirit of God will never tell, tell you or teach you something that contradicts the Word. So let's talk about uh, things, you know, when we start talking about following the Holy Ghost, it, it should be understood that some of these things will be indistinct to you at first. All right? Because why? Because you don't know, you know? Um, example. Joan and I, um, oh, over the last few years, we've enjoyed going down to Branson. They have a lot of good, usually clean, godly kinds of shows, you know, and, and uh, we like to go watch them and things like that. Well, there's one particular one <clears throat> that's a bunch of brothers and a sister named the Haygoods, and we love going to I mean, every time you go, man, it is awesome. So if you're ever down there, go to the show. You won't be disappointed. Well, we've been to this show quite a few times. Well, when we first went, the first time we went, we pulled in the front of the building, you know, and just like a bazillion ever, I mean, other people, this show is always sold out. So there ain't even room for dust. You got to find a place to park. And so we ended up clearing the back, you know, someplace. And so the next time, you know, we're thinking, man, there ought to be a better way. Well, as it turns out, we learned that you could actually go out the back way you know, and, and get out of there, you know, a lot quicker than trying to get on the main drag and, you know, fight through all of that stuff. Well, the last time we were down there, just this last week, and we went to the show, and my wife and I, praise God, we got her now. <laughs> we come in the back way, and we park the truck so we could go straight back out the back way, and, you know, in and out, baby, it was great. Well, the point is, is that to begin with, we had to go through all this fuss and muss and deal with people and all this other kind of business. And, and that time, man, we just kind of rolled up in there, parked the truck, went in, watched the show, got done, walked out, got the truck and left. And, and all that other, 
you know, a gazillion people trying to figure out how they're going to get out of the parking lot. We never experienced it. So the point is, is that when you first, you know, kind of get started with some of these things, you don't always know, you know, but hopefully we learn. Can you say amen? And we get better at, at what it is that we're doing when it comes to some of these things. And so, but, I, but, but again, things are a little bit indistinct uh, to us, um, you know, at the first. So it's safe to say that all of us are going to make some mistakes to begin with because of what we don't know. Any of you ever made any mistakes? Huh? Sure enough, huh? But, but again, go back to that scripture. I, I, go back there again, uh, 1 John um, uh, chapter 2 and verse 20. Notice again it says, this is King James, but you have an unction, you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Everybody say, I know it. See, in other words, if we'll learn to listen, the Spirit of God will guide us and lead us in the way that we should go. Read verse 27 again with me, if you would please. It says, but the anointing or that unction that we have, which you have received of him, abides where again? In you. Hallelujah. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you in all things, and is truth and is no lie, even as it is taught you, you shall abide in him or in that anointing. So God will lead us. He wants to teach us. He wants to show us the way in which we should go. So, so, so how are we taught? Well, we're taught by the inward witness. And all of you have experienced, if you're born again, all of you have experienced about, it, it would come this way. I don't know how I know, but I know. How many of you can attest to that? That's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how I know, but I just know that's no, huh? So, so when we start going down the road of life, we need to ask the Holy Ghost, or I would say it this way, ask the Father, you know, Lord, is this what we need to be doing? You know, what is it that you want us to, you know, uh, take on here or, or, or be involved in? Because it's important. So, um, I'll give you a case in point, and I've shared it before, but when I first got saved, I got saved the 27th day of August, 1975, and so it was in the summer months, and we were coming into the fall of the year, and I played in a football league, and it was sponsored by the Depot Lounge, and, and so they would sponsor us, and we would go play football, and then we'd go to the Depot and drink all, you know, a long time, you know, and then go home. Well, I got saved. So I go into the Depot Lounge. Now, this, you can't find this in the Bible, all right? Doesn't say it this way. But I'm sitting at the bar, and all of a sudden I hear these words. And they come right up out of my spirit. And it says, you don't belong here. And I thought to myself, I don't belong here. You know, I mean, it was just kind of that stark. And I will guarantee you that I had never had that thought ever before. Okay, so somebody else had to be telling me, you don't belong here. And so I, you know, got up off the stool and I walked out the door and never went back. Why? Because the Holy Ghost told me I don't belong there. Now, interestingly enough, you can say what you want about it. You know, a lot of folks these days, they get into this, you know, uh, sipping saints kind of business, you know, where they, uh, you know, casually drink and, um, and think it's okay. Well, there's nothing in the Bible that tells you that you can't drink. I mean, there's nothing in the Word of God that, you know, as a matter of fact, I mean, you could, you could probably argue that Paul told Timothy to take some wine for an ailment, a physical ailment that he had in his mind. People have done that too, baby. They'll ride that horse till it's dead. Hey, hey, yeah, it's good for my, you know, medicinal purposes, you know. Yeah, right. So you can say whatever you want about it. <clears throat> But I can tell you this much about it. Spirit of God says, you don't belong there. I have no business being involved in any of that. And I watched alcohol destroy my family. You know, my dad, he died of cirrhosis of the liver. You're never going to talk me into that, okay? Not to mention the fact that I'm to be an example of the believer in everything that I do. So if I'm sitting at a bar, bellying up with everybody else and drinking like a fish, guess what? That is not a good witness, especially when you got people that have problems with alcohol and they're trying to get delivered, and the preacher's up there, you know, drinking like everybody else. Are you listening to me? So I don't, I don't mean to argue uh, the point 
but the reality is, is that you got no business being involved in that kind of a lifestyle. That's all I'm telling you. Now, can you be? Absolutely. You know, people do it all the time. They compromise. They get to doing this and that and the other. And you say, yeah, but if I can't drink, I mean, what am I going to do? Listen, dude, the Holy Ghost will make you happier than any alcohol ever will. People do it a lot of times because of guilt and condemnation and stuff, that junk that they got going on there. I'm talking about Christians. And so they go out and anesthetize themselves. You know, that's not the way you pronounce it. How is it that you pronounce that? That's close. All right. Are you with me? So I know what the Spirit of God said to me, so I ain't going near it. Are you listening to me? Amen. There are other ways where you can have joy, you can have great friendships, you can have all kinds of things. Hallelujah. So now, <clears throat> here's another thing talking about being led by the Holy Ghost. You all doing all right? Um, uh, how many of you have ever made some mistakes when it comes to your life because of what you wanted? I'm going to pray for liars <laughs> after the service. I'll give you, you know, I'm not proud of it, but dude, I mean, you know, God knew my heart. I mean, a lot of this stuff I'm sharing with you, it was a mistake of the head, not the heart. I loved Jesus, and he was my savior, and he was real. But when I got saved, God put me in a grocery store in a little town, trainer, working, uh, uh, stacking shelves, fronting shelves, and taking out, carry out people's groceries. I don't know, you know, as a 19, 20 year old, that's not the most, you know, glorious job in the world. Right? But he put me there for a reason because everybody in town knew me. And when I got saved, the change was so dramatic that everybody that walked in that store and seen me thought, this ain't even the same person. So I was a trophy that God had set me in this, in this grocery store, and I didn't like it, okay? Why? Because I wanted to do something else. There's no nobility in, in hearing the person on the you know, speaker go, carry out, and that means you, you know? But I did it, you know, and, uh, and um, but then uh, we're talking about making mistakes, I had a classmate, he actually wasn't a classmate of mine, he was a year behind me, but he would come in the grocery store and say, man, you, you, we, need to, we need to start a business together. You know, we could start this construction business and I'm telling you, we could make all kind of money and you know, blah, 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 blah. And now remember, I don't like what I'm doing, okay? But, you know, the bait is out there. And so I, I would resist, you know, the, the temptation, but like I said, I don't like what I'm doing. So that makes the temptation greater. You can get set up for some really goofed up stuff if you're not careful. And I wasn't careful and got messed up. So I'm, I'm talking to people. I'm trying to get counsel from, you know, other Christians and things like that. And, you know, and somebody will say, well, you know, partnerships, I mean, it's like getting married, you know, is that what you want to do and whatever. And this person was not a believer. And guess what? I had a verse of Scripture that said, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers because what does righteousness have to do with unrighteousness? That should have been enough. Oh, no. No, no. He'd keep coming in, you know, and talking about how much money we could make. And the other thing about it was is that the grocery store was about to be sold. So the people that I'd been working for for a long time, they were going to be, they're actually going to move across the street and they're going to, uh, they bought the hardware. And so there was going to be a new, new game in town, you know, as far as the boss. How many of you know sometimes when the next boss comes, you don't like him very much? Well, I'm telling you what, baby, that is exactly what happened. He wasn't so bad, but she was, hmm, interesting. Praise the Lord. So that made that job even more difficult. And uh, finally, this person talked me into it. And I actually talked with, with the previous owner about the whole idea. And, and you know, uh, interestingly enough, he got into a, a partnership with somebody else uh, a little later down the road in life. But he wasn't against it. You know, he was just all about, you know, doing whatever. And he just thought, this is back 40-some, 50 years ago. He said, you know, his dad told him, if you ain't got $100,000 borrowed, you ain't doing nothing. 
I mean, he was just all about it, you know. And so he, he talked to me, he says, I, you know, I said, well, how much should we charge if we're doing this? He says, well, what are you worth? You know, and so he, he was just kind of trying to give me some guidance and different things like that. Well, so I bit. And I started um, uh, working, we started working together in a partnership. Lasted nine months. And it was terrible from the get-go. Why? Because, dude, oil and water don't mix. You know, I'm wanting to do things in a godly kind of way. This guy, he don't care about nothing, man. He just wants to make money. And he's spending it like it's going out of style. So nine months later, here I am, I got no job. So then, you know, I'm growing. I'm trying to, you know, learn about the ways of, of uh, God and, and how it is. And, and <clears throat> I'm in the Word of Faith camp, charismatic movement. And they're preaching the just shall live by faith. Now, here's the point that I want to make to this, and that is, is that my, my heart was right, but my head was stupid, because I interpreted, now, I don't know whether, you know, because of what was said, that's, you know, what the, was being implied or whatever, but I just thought, you know, if you live by faith and you believe God, you don't have to do nothing. God will just take care of you. Bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening. And it was dumb, and it wasn't godly. Are you listening to me? So here I am, you know, and, and uh, because the thing is, is that, you know, you're going down the road and, and, and uh, you want to be somebody. I want to be a big faith person, you know, and I'm, so I'm going to believe God. Well, that's nothing but pride. It's arrogance, but you don't see that. Are you listening to me? And then the other aspect about that is that if I don't have to work, well, that's even better yet. Why? Because if you're lazy, huh? I'm not saying I was lazy. But if I don't have to work, then hallelujah, let's believe God. Well, the only thing that happened was is I got broke and, and didn't have a thing. And I went to South Dakota, to Brookings, South Dakota, in some house I could never tell you where I was. And a guy told me if a man doesn't work, he's not going to eat. But he was very kind about it. I told him my story and everything, you know, I was doing and believing God, you know, and like I'm some big somebody, whatever. Dude, I was a Nerf ball. Are you listening to me? And so he said, well, can I show you a couple of scriptures? I said, sure, man, come on, bring it. He shows me the scripture. He says, if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. I thought, let me look at that. Let me see that again. Then he, then he pulls over to another verse of scripture, and it says that if you don't provide for your own, you're worse than an unbeliever. And so I got to go all the way to South Dakota to learn this lesson? And, and here it is, you guys. God's my witness. I drove back home that Sunday night. I walked in the door, and the phone rang. And it was my previous employer that I didn't like. Will you come back to work? Yes, I will. I sure will. Praise God. If I got to be here until Jesus comes, right here. This is my, this is my, this is, this is my lane. Because I'd learned that I had been foolish. Now, again, it wasn't... It was a mistake of the head and not the heart. Are you listening to me? And, and it's so easy for Christians to do. Are you with me? It's below your dignity to have to do that. I mean, that's kind of the, what I thought. You know, but there was a reason why God, he wanted me to be a witness to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? And so, you know, uh, just thought I'd share that with you so that you could know uh, next time you have an opportunity. <laughs> you could do something about it, amen? And, and not miss out on what it is that God wants you, you know, to do. So, um, uh, and here's the thing, you guys. I thought I was pleasing God. I mean, God has got to be proud of me because I'm living by faith. But you know, I was misguided. I did not know what living by faith meant. Are you with me? You know? And so I just learned, man, I, I, I got to go to work. And God will bless, and there's another scripture, he'll bless the what? The work of your hand. You with me? So, yeah, I guess we all got to work, you know. And, um, and so thank God the way we went. And I'm sure that at the time, my wife, um, she wasn't my wife then, but she was glad I went back to work. Amen. Because she's probably embarrassed because I wasn't working. We were very bad Bad, 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 bad people. I remember one time, do you remember we got picked up in front of the school, the high school by the highway patrolman? Do you remember that? Yes, she does. 
we got, I just, uh, I'd wrecked my car. Let's see, were we saved at that point? I don't know that we, yeah, we were because I had that Datsun 280Z. Listen, when, when the highway patrolman, the law enforcement officer, comes up to your window and refers to you by your last name before he looks at anything, <laughs> that is not a good thing. So I was on their watch list. And, he, you know, I don't know why he pulled us over. to. I mean, I don't remember, but, but he sure was checking things out. And he said something about Calstrip, you, you need to blah, blah, blah. Well, as soon as he did that, I thought, oh, this is not good. Yeah, I don't even think he checked our, my stuff or anything. had a brand new car. Well, I had a brand new car. Yeah, they were probably. He wouldn't have even known your car. Right. But he picked us up in front of school, Trainer, Iowa. Lights flashing. It was great. We used to play car tag. You ever play car tag? takes two people to do it. You have one guy in the passenger seat and one guy driving. And, you know, you get about six cars and, or however many you can find and you play tag all over trainer or over the community. And so the person, ha you either have to get close enough to your guy can touch their car and they become it or you got to get them pinned or cornered someplace so that the guy can get out of the car and run to him and tag him. It was awesome. And I tell you what, dude, when I got that 280C, baby, I, I didn't get caught very much. It was awesome. Wore the tires off on that thing almost immediately. All right. Where were we? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I could tell you a lot of stories about that. Um, let's talk about... Um, this inward witness. I want you to um, get a little bit more of this. Is that all right? Can you give me a few more minutes? I got just a bit here. When we started pastoring, you know, um, we didn't know what we were doing. I went to Bible school for a year, got a little theology taught to me, and came back home, and here we are, away we go. But you know, the Spirit of God will guide you if you'll listen to Him. Are you with me? So when we first got started, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're young, uh, you're impressionable, you can, you know, think one thing and really it isn't that way at all. Remember, we had these three people, and I don't remember if two of them were married and one of them was a brother. It's not kind of glory, so don't get all jacked up about who I'm talking about. You don't even know these people. But, you know, they wanted to come to our church. And, you know, when you become the pastor of the church, you need to protect your pulpit, and what I mean by that is you need to make sure that whatever's coming out of there is right. And I tell you what, if I had to just listen to God, I could have avoided myself. Remember that? Yeah. And so we had this meeting. Deanna would remember it. You were there. And we had this meeting, and these people were stranger than a four-legged I don't know what. But I'm sitting in the front row, and I said, this is not good. And I felt embarrassed. I felt, you know bad about everything. Well, when it was, when they finally finished, I got up and said, this is a lot. It was supposed to be a three night meeting. And uh, were you there, Teresa? Yeah. You were. Okay. It's supposed to be a three night meeting. And uh, I got up and said, uh, we won't be meeting anymore. We're done. <laughs> and, uh, and so I just told him, I said, I don't know what you guys got going on, man, but you're weirder than a $3 bill. And we're just, it's over, you know? <laughs> But here's the cool thing about it is, is that there were all kinds of people in the church that came and um, commended me for putting a stop to it. That's awesome. Yeah, because everybody else knew it was weird too. You with me? Yeah. And, and then on the other hand, you know, hopefully you learn, you know, you learn. And I remember on another occasion, we had a, a, a ministry, you know, they were, well, they were actually friends of ours and everything, but... But there was just something about it, just, you know, and I mean, we were always getting pressure put on us to, you know, have them in the church, and we never did have them, and I thank God, because the whole thing went sideways and turned out to be a bunch of junk. And I couldn't really put my finger on it. We were pretty young, you know, at that time and different things like that, but, you know, as we went down the road of life, we learned. So my point to all of that is, is that, you know, we're all going to make some mistakes, but let's stay tender before God and let's listen to the Holy Ghost and say, God, help me, teach me. And he will. 
you know, so that, you, you know, you don't make mistakes. Because the thing of it is, is we're just living in some pretty perilous kinds of times. And, but you don't have to be afraid of that. You just have to listen to the Spirit of God. Let me, let me say a couple more things here. I'll, I'll jump down in the bottom of this. and Because uh, I was going to talk to you. Maybe, maybe next week we can talk some more about. I want to talk to you about pro- prophecy. And because there's a lot of prophesying going on, and especially, you know, when we had the election cycle back in 2020, and there was all this stuff being said, and, and this and this and that, and the other was going to happen, and it didn't happen. So that just goes to show you that something ain't quite copacetti here. Are you with me? And I'm not throwing rocks at anybody, but, you know, what we need to do is if, if we prophesy something and it doesn't come to pass, we ought to be men and women big enough to say, I missed it, but you never heard that. And that's the problem. Are you with me? And so it becomes important. We can talk more about that. But there's a couple different things here that I want to uh, mention here. Just, just close with me this verse of Scripture here in Colossians chapter 3. This will help you. Praise God. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. It says, and let. Everybody say let. Let. The peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be you thankful. There's a lot in that verse, and again, we could talk about it, but you know, if God is not the author of confusion. So if you're confused, dude, that ain't God. He's the author of peace. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, right? So when you read that scripture and it says, you know, let the peace, let, you have to allow or let the peace of God, you know, rule um, by, by, by definition, what that word means is, is to serve as an umpire. What does that mean? That means that when you're facing decisions and you're dealing with stuff, you know, let, let the peace become the umpire that says, Yes or no, right? So if you don't have peace, you don't do it. And until you do, you don't. You with me? Save you a lot of heartache. And you might get all kinds of pressure and different. See, again, let the peace of God rule in your heart. And a lot of times in our lives, we got people that are putting pressure on us. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do the other. Well, Um, if you don't have the peace that you need for it, then don't do it. And it may not be popular. It may not be um, um, convenient. It may not be any of those things. But you know what, praise God? He leads us in the way of peace. Are you with me? And we'll maybe talk about that a little bit more. You guys have been such great listeners. Let's, Let's commit this to our hearts. We'll pray here. Father, we just thank you so very much. Thank you, Father, that you sent the Holy Ghost to lead and guide us into all the truth. And Father God, for these, your people, and those maybe watching um, uh, by internet, Father God, we ask you to help us to follow after your peace where our lives are concerned. Help us to look to you, Father, because I know you want to guide us in the way you would have us to go. And we just thank you for your blessing, your goodness and mercy in every one of our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and receive our evening offering. The ushers.